What's up guys, I'm Nick Steiner, this has been Wharton, and welcome to an all new episode of Coffee and Cards, where we give you an inside look to PGA professionals and tour players around the globe and getting you some tips along the way as well too. Today we're at the 13th Beach Short Course because the pros are teeing it up today at the Beach and Creek. So you ready to get out there? Absolutely, let's, let's do it. Let's go. There's been a fair bit of uh, amateur golfers, mid handicappers, claimed single figures uh, or scratch golfers that are making content mm -hmm. that is like they're golf professional. I don't like the practice strokes in there. Um, I just find they're not really necessary. And then you got Monday qualifiers. Yeah. Then you got practice on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize how much golf you really have to play on these feeder tours just to make yeah. it up. There. Yeah, we do, we play a lot. I'd say I'd play the same shot if I was an amateur golfer. There's no point bumping it or hitting a three wood or something like that. This is their livelihood. This is what they're battling for. And, and good on you, Ben. For yeah, but don't, don't feel sorry for me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I still get to play golf every day, so it's a... So we're gonna take a look at the uh, first hole here. Like we said, we got about 160 meter par three, it looks like. Let's take a yeah. look. Yeah, it looks to me like it's a it's a nice little hole and it's definitely into the wind. I think normally I'd hit like a, probably a seven iron, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a little six, so. Okay. Uh, just kind of, the green looks pretty small to me. You said you're gonna seven iron, then you went to the six. Yep. Now, is there something that goes in your thoughts or tips that you would have at home for maybe the grip or choking down or anything that you naturally do when you decide to make that change a little bit? Or yeah. you, you really just go at it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, um, hitting like a three quarter shot or if it is windy, you don't wanna kind of kind of bust it up there. And I, I've talked about this before um, with clients and, and things. If you, the harder you hit it and the, the more kind of oomph you put into your, your swing, I suppose, um, trying to get the ball there, then the more spin and revolutions it puts on the ball. So then that makes it go higher and then into the wind that comes kind of backwards, I suppose. So um, best way to go around it, just grip down a little bit, um, take an extra club, grip down a little bit, swing it three quarter on the way back and kind of smooth. When they say swing, when it's breezy, swing it when easy. Breezy, swing it easy. <laughs> yeah. That makes complete sense, yeah. right? You know, so many amateurs, you know, like myself, will just, you know, try and get their, just strengthen it or swing a little bit harder or, really go at it when you watch you guys play it it really is just a very natural fluid thing that uh we can all learn from that's for sure yeah absolutely we're trying to hit it in a you know a small compact area and the margin for error are, are greater if you if you're going at it with a you know fast velocity all the time of course pins on the left i'm just going to aim straight at it finish it up on the middle of the green Love that sound. It's okay. The wind drifted a little right, but yep. it'll Give us play. a good chance to give a little lesson here on yeah. up and down. All right, Ben, so here we are. Uh, just caught the edge of the green, kicked off to the right. As we do see, there's a bit of wind when you looked at the flag. A <coughs> uh, bit of an up and down situation here. What yeah. are you thinking? Uh, it is into the wind. The greens are quite firm. Um, looking at my lie, it's kind of sat down in the rough a little bit. So I'm just going to take the 60 out, um, kind of hit it up nice and high about 15 foot short and let it run down the hill there to tap in. Look, yeah. Nice, looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Now, a few of the things that we talked about here is how can we continue to add as much value to the people at home that are watching this today. So you've made that decision, decision you're gonna grab the 60. Yep. Uh, what are your swing tips? What, are, what should the amateur at home really be thinking if maybe they're looking at this shot? Um, I'd say I'd play the same shot if I was an amateur golfer. Um, there's no point bumping it or hitting a three wood or something like that. Um, it, it, this shot demands a, a lot high lofted shot with spin on it. I see a lot of amateur golfers um, chipping wise, they tend to have uh, the handle back um, and then they try and scoop the ball up in the air. Um, a lot of them, um, no, no body rotation, no movement through the kind of impact or strike zone. Um, basically, I'd, I'd say uh, narrow your stance a little bit, easiest way to do it. And then we're going a little further forward in our stance, which then kind of creates a bit of lean in the handle. And then we're kind of just following the line of our feet. If our feet are kind of aiming a little bit open, the easiest way to hit a crisp chip shot and using the bounce properly is kind of just going out and then cutting across. And it goes out nice and high. Oh, look at that. Right yeah. down next to the pin. Not bad. Little left of it. Not That's bad it. at all, mate. I'll take that. All right, grab that putter. Let's see this tips at home or what, what you're thinking as soon as you're beginning to walk up right away? Um, as I'm walking on the green, I, uh, 
I actually begin to read the putt. So I'm not kind of thinking about the putt, the last shot or anything like that. I kind of um, subconsciously, I suppose, because I've been doing it so long, I, I take in my surroundings, so slopes and all that sort of stuff. Or if one of my playing partners is uh, the other pros or whatever is, is putting, I'll kind of take notice of what their ball's doing, if it's going around the hole and the way it's falling. Um, obviously, I mark my ball, don't have a coin, but Got a T. Um, yeah, T is cool. We're we'll just out here. Yeah, easy done. And then, and then to read the putt, I kind of just, I mean, all the pros, this is how we kind of go around it, or the majority. I think Sergio Garcia is probably the only guy that, don't, uh, and don't quote me on that, that doesn't go all the way around the hole. But they, we generally walk all the way around the hole, get a kind of lay of the land and all that sort of stuff. See the, see the break. Um, I kind of get down low to reiterate what I've already seen. I like to do a little plumb bob thing just out of habit. It's just part of my routine. It doesn't really do anything. You don't see the plumb bob as much as you used to, hey? Yeah, I just, I mean, I've been a pro nearly 20 years now, uh, Nick, so <laughs> I, mean, I do the old school. But uh, nowadays, the same, the, uh, I don't know how to do it. What's this one called with the- Oh uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the old aim point. The, the old aim point thing. Yep. That's basically yep. the plumb bob. It's just a, a refined <laughs> version. Um, and then uh, routine's very important with putting, so you're not, necessarily trying to hold the putt as such in a mental kind of capacity. We're just kind of going through the, our motions of our routine and doing everything the same over and over and over again allows us to then when we stand over the putt, be kind of really confident with what's going on. Um, I don't like a practice stroke. I kind of just get my um, club face lined up to the, the line I've already put on the ball. Nice and relaxed hands and arms, have two looks and then just stroke it in. Bang, there we go. Yeah. Now I love that. We've had uh, quite a few videos that we filmed lately. So as yep. you know, I'm, you know, partnered with Richard Woodhouse, fist uh -huh. bump here, nice little par. Yeah, easy. Um, oh, fist bump. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'll no, it's all good. Thing. It's all good. Just <laughs> handing it over. So we've had quite a few conversations yep. lately about not looking at the hole repeatedly, yep. you know, practice strokes. It really just seems to make players just ready to go mm -hmm. and pull that trigger. Is that is that what you feel as well? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't like the practice strokes in a, um, kind of an aspect to get uh, I just find they're not really necessary and I've read certain studies that say it's it's not necessarily beneficial um, I find if you're gonna take a practice stroke it's more beneficial to do it like uh, again to bring up Jason Day or, or Aaron Badley another Aussie guy probably the best putter I've ever seen and um, they kind of take the practice strokes behind the ball as they're visualizing the ball drop in the hole which is more beneficial in the putt I think getting into the visual aspect of it rather than where your hands and arms are kind of functioning uh yeah but uh, to answer your question i don't really like looking at it too often either it gets it allows your subconscious to kick in it's like if you were going to throw a ball um to someone you don't really um you, you or you you know kicking the footy playing afl or playing basketball um uh, Steph Curry probably doesn't look at the look at the hoop too many times when, he, when he's shooting a three-pointer. So yeah. you just feel it and throw it and let your let your subconscious mind do the work. Love it. Stay yeah. out of that six six inches between the ears, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. What's the difference versus playing in or not playing in the pro am? What is that? What what do most guys? Uh, and I'm sure you can't speak for everyone, but yep. is it something that you know it's good to do and it's fun to connect with people sometimes? Is it other times yeah. you like to just go and practice and focus on your game so you don't really need to do that what what's the difference between guys that are aren't doing that right now uh, yeah it's a uh, it's beneficial in two areas I, I suppose i i don't personally like playing them they're good to connect with um people that you wouldn't meet before um it's nice to give back obviously to the the sponsors of the tournament which we appreciate um but it's it it does i have a really tough time focusing um properly so putting that uh, amount of effort six five hours on the course and then six hours so uh, dinner afterwards or whatever into you know the day before you're trying to compete is quite difficult yeah and that's a lot of energy right especially too yeah. if it comes from you know thinking about you know then you got monday qualifiers yeah. then you got practice on tuesdays mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize how much golf you really have to play on these feeder tours just to make yeah. it out there. yeah we do we play a lot uh, we've we played uh, eight weeks in a row, and I played every day, um, other than I work on Mondays and Tuesdays, believe it or not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, so I kind of get all my practice in on a Wednesday, and then um, tee it up on a Thursday and try and compete with all the boys. But All right, guys, so those are some of the differences that you'll actually see with these guys. Um, again, mad credit to them. 
I find it difficult to play two days, three days in a row sometimes and working on my personal fitness to get through it. I can't imagine them. Not only are they battling for their livelihood, battling for paychecks, battling to make it on these other tours, but they're traveling to and from. They're having to book all their own stuff. Uh, again, it's not, you know, really a, a poor me situation because this is what this is what they've bred into. Mm -hmm. This is their love. This is their passion. Absolutely. Uh, but a lot of respect needs to go out to these guys because it's just not those top 10 that we see on TV all the time that are flying jets and <laughs> doing all these crazy, wonderful things that they all would love to do. Yeah. Um, but the majority of them out there, guys, this is their livelihood. This is what they're battling for. And, and good on you, Ben, for... Yeah, but don't, don't feel sorry for me. No, because... no. <laughs> <laughs> I still get to play golf every day, so it's, a, it's a pretty cool. But, yeah, yeah, cool. All right, well, let's watch you play some more golf here yeah. and see how you approach this next shot. You're done. All right, so, Ben, as we were just talking, you get to play with a lot in uh, these pro-ams or yeah. at your local club. Obviously, you get a lot, a lot of people asking you questions. Mm -hmm. What are some of the biggest swing tips and things that you tend to see that maybe we can uh, educate with some people with? Uh, basically, one of the biggest things I see amateur golfers uh, do is try and hit the, hit the ball with their hands and arms. So they try and create power or speed with their upper body generally, which then throws the club out of, of outside of the path, which it creates a cut across action and the slice that everyone hates. Um, most amateur golfers like hitting a draw and to do that, you kind of have to get your body um, engaged and working properly. Um, again, if you from the top of the swing, most people, like the majority that do hit the slice, it's from this action, trying to hit at the ball and not kind of letting your body swing. Um, the, a, good, a good tip that I can think of is just kind of feeling like your hands and arms are, are jelly or, or they're, they're kind of just hanging up there in space and you're just trying to rotate your body through, which then obviously you just saw kind of lays the club back flat, which then creates a, a nice little draw. You know, it's definitely something I, I've had a problem with and it's something I've really had just to rebuild my swing completely around mm -hmm. um, is having that feeling and not getting lessons young enough and uh, working through that sort of thing myself. So I definitely yep. um, am on page yeah. with most of the people out there and have that feeling. So <laughs> yeah. uh, let's see, hit this yeah. next shot as we uh, cruise out. No doubt, 99% of people uh, do do that, Nick. So you're not, you're not on your own, mate. Well, it's not bad. Flushed. It's pretty good. Oh, a little oh, bit, just a, oh, little a little bit long, a little bit long. Went through the wind, that's all right. I'll hold that. What are some of the biggest mental challenges for you week in and week out as you've grown with this game? Yeah, um, as I've grown with the game is uh, self-belief and, and confidence um, is a lot to do with it. A lot of self, having to give myself a lot of positive self-talk and affirmations. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, 18 years of being a pro, you get have a lot of negative times. Um, there's not many wins out there, as most people see it, unless you're Tiger. Your, yeah. your percentage isn't that high on the win, win factor, so a lot of positive self-talk. A um, uh, few other tra traveling is, a, is difficult. Being away from uh, your wife or your family, and um, it's easy when you're young, but you know, because you chill, just you're just traveling around the world, and experiencing stuff. But as you get on, that's a that's definitely a mental challenge. Yep. Yeah. And the mental challenges you now, as you are transitioning a bit in your professional career and yeah. and different goals that you have, uh, what's actually happening for you now? Uh, I've started coaching um, uh, recently, uh, kind of the last year or so. Um, so I'm trying to build up that that side of a business to transition. Um, obviously, I still have goals and aspirations to, you know, play on the ma on the ma major tours, PGA Tour, and um, I was born in England, so the British Open's a massive goal of mine to, to try and get and pl play and win uh, that one. But um, yeah, basically building up my coaching business, um, you know, mortgage, kit, children on the way, and all that sort of all, all that sort of stuff. And, and I mean, eventually you get to the end of your tether and. And uh, this game, you know, it can beat you down um, uh, at some point. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, who knows? The little one might have the future along. Uh, yeah, they catch the yeah. bug as well, too. I'm sure yeah. one can only, can yeah. only dream. From... I'll, be, I'll be yelling at it, um, <laughs> rattling my coins and everything like Tiger's dad to get it, get it yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, th and that's a big thing, too, that, that you see in golf. It's so interesting nowadays, right, to where... You see so many kids, and you're seeing it with juniors uh -huh. as well, right? Yep. To where some parents are just really high pressure and pushing mm -hmm. their kids to do all these things. Yep. And then other ones just kind of let their kids do their thing. And 
You know, it's it's interesting how that turns out because the road can either go both ways. Um, yeah. How how they treat that, no matter which way they do approach it. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, there's burnout, as we all know, in sport and life is a thing, um, and there could be too much of uh, too much of one thing and not enough of another. There's kind of needs to be a balance of both. Yeah, I nice. Mean, yeah, yeah. Well, we're about to balance this up and down over yeah. here again. Yeah, that's uh, it. As we get some more. Hey, it might be on the green. It might be yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Just creep it a little over the back, yeah. so uh, we should see. Let's get up there. All right, guys, we're up here having another putt. Um, yep. Obviously, I'm a bit of a dick. You you made the green. Yeah, I, I mate. thought. Uh, yeah, I thought it was actually. No, it goes over the tier, mate. No, go. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't see that from back there. You couldn't see it. <laughs> I couldn't. I'm not sure, but you probably could, Nick. All right, so we're approaching this one. Yep. I mean, if you get down here, you can see. Yeah, it's a massive. You see the ball, and then you can't. Massive slope there. Massive slope that's here. See if I can kind of get it from the backside too. You'll just see how much the flag kind yeah, of disappears. It's gonna, it's gonna be quick down there, for sure. So with this kind of shot, obviously with this putt, yep. still looks like a s single breaker or a bit of a double both sides? Uh, it's a bit of a double. I think it goes right to left and then left to right coming down. The one thing I like to do with putts like this, I like to come halfway and kind of get a little feel for what it's gonna do in the last six to eight feet. Um, as I can tell, it's gonna go this way, but it's really nice to see what's happening closer to the hole. Um, same deal. Do my little plumb box. We'll get a little action. side angle here, a little bit of elevation. Yeah. I think it's, I'm going to hit it pretty straight. It's going to go right to left and left to right. It's very fast down there. Up over the hill, coming down. Pretty good. Oh, not too bad. Good lag down there. That's how the pros do it, folks. <laughs> we Just have a to. Tap. And another par. Easy, easy done. Love it. Bam. Knuckles for a par. Nice I like that. I need you around more often. <laughs> <laughs> As of lately, you and I were having a bit of a chat about, uh, and good on them, there's been a fair bit of uh, amateur golfers, mid-handicappers, mm -hmm. claimed single figures uh, or scratch golfers that are making content mm -hmm. that is like they're golf professionals. Yeah. And again, they're just, of course, watching and looking at golf professional videos mm -hmm. and sharing what those people are sharing. But mm -hmm. it's really inspired you to take the next leap in your journey, which I'm happy to celebrate and help build and, and yeah. share your content. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I just decided. I, I got invited to play with a nice guy at Golf Slump, so give him a follow. He's a great kid. Um, and then uh, we, we played out, and he's got an abundance of followers and obviously isn't, uh, isn't a professional golfer, but uh, good on him for putting in the work and time and effort and the knowledge into in, into his skills. But uh, me being a professional, um, a, a coach and, a, and a, a PGA Tour player myself, I noticed that no real PGA Tour players out there were, were putting out the content um, regarding the golf swing or how to play better golf, I suppose, um, because it's not all just golf swing. Um, <laughs> mainly because they probably on the PGA Tour make a little bit more cash than I do but um, and don't work as coaches. But, um, yeah, I saw an opportunity to, to, to put out some stuff. And, and, again, going back to my father being a pro um, when I was a kid um, and my uncle actually was a golf coach as well. So I had the knowledge um, growing up. Um, you know, sitting at the dinner table or or Christmas Day or whatever, um, asking asking an abundance of questions, and I know a lot of golfers out there really struggle. And and uh, all my clients search YouTube and tell me they they've seen this on YouTube or that on YouTube. And so I thought I'll be that guy that they're watching on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and you're now becoming <laughs> yeah. that guy. Yeah, and we are going to share um, within the links and in the comments and in yeah. this. Uh, mm -hmm. video as well tagging your socials but yeah where you. is the main place that people are going to be able to find you uh on my instagram that's ben wharton golf uh ben b-e-n-w-h-a-r-t-o-n golf yep all right that's it ben wharton golf that's it tips and tricks he's making some awesome reels and just getting his yeah. journey started and yeah. uh, happy to celebrate it and glad that it's uh brought us together we've talked about yeah. doing this for a while so just wanted to create some cool ton content yeah tell your story mm -hmm. and continue to give as much back to our community as we can uh, for you guys to learn as well too 100 but not only that i've been using a back to basics uh putting mirror now since <laughs> since they probably came out so a few years now so that's pretty cool too. yeah nice well, yeah. we'll have some uh, tips and tricks here at the end uh, yeah. on how to do that as well and yeah. 
Uh, let's continue this journey and uh, let's just probably dive a little bit more into, uh, we'll go back. We're going to go show you guys some inside looks into what it kind of looks like on tour prep and, th and that sort of thing that mm -hmm. Ben can walk you through. Yep. And uh, we'll share a little bit of that story. What do you think? Yeah, beautiful. Sounds great to me. Awesome. All right, guys, we're out here at the putting green for the Vic Open. Putting green's pretty busy. What are you thinking about when you approach the green or what's uh, what's kind of coming up right now with you when you, when you get in this mode? Yeah, it's pretty busy and there's no holes out there. But what I like to do is get the back to basics mirror out and kind of check where my head is positioned and all that sort of stuff. And get and it's really good for kind of swing arc and, and all that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll kind of place it down and I'll put it, find this flat spot and put a tee down and try and avoid everyone because I like being by myself. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, let's do that. So a fair bit of these players that we'll see out here today uh, do use the back to basics mirror, which is pretty cool. So first of all, I'll grab a few balls, grab a mirror. Grab a few tees. You never have too many tees. And the uh, magic wand. Magic the flat stick. What do we got here? Ma magic Everybody wand. Everybody loves to see it. Yeah. Um, this week, because I change weekly. I change weekly. I've got a Del Mar Scotty Cameron. Um, it's pretty cool. It's kind of an a normal um, that you can buy off the shelf type thing, but it's uh, it's got some as everyone's pretty pretty big on the circle T. It's got some circle T weights in there just oh, to make, yeah, nice. it, make it a little bit heavier than, uh, than normal and a nice cord grip on it. So like I said, it's pretty busy out here. So I like to just find a nice flat spot with a bit of a uh, bit of an upslope. So a little bit of an upslope. Why do you like to see the upslope? Uh, I like to see the upslope. Just, it just kind of gets me hitting the ball up the, up the hill. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the time, I mean, you don't want to really practice putting on a, on a down slope, I suppose. Um, can affect affect the path of your stroke. I just like to do it either on the completely flat or if you can't find a flat position um, on a down slope. And then I really, I kind of go through um, and be quite technical about it. But I want to, if I'm, if there's no um, hole there, then I'll kind of lay something down so I can put a T to make sure my alignment's all correct. And then I'm hitting the ball to that that position. Um, for me, this uh, the back to basics mirror is fantastic and it has that arc on there. What I like to do, um, a la Tiger Woods, is kind of have the tees um, on the either side of my putter here, just to, it's just at the impact zone, just to give myself a bit of a understanding of where I'm hitting the middle of the face there. And then basically I just do this for, I like to do anywhere from 10 to 20 putts. Um, don't overdo it on the mirror but I like to see my eyes um, a little bit inside the ball that's just personal preference and then I've actually had a little bit of a problem recently taking my putter outside the line um, so this is fantastic uh, in the way it kind of helps me arc my stroke properly and then obviously trying just to tap hit the tee. just tapping the tee mate just uh, pretending that tees the hole and obviously the tee being quite small and the hole being big, if you can hit the tee, well, that one missed, but if we can hit the tee, it kind of gives you a little bit more confidence in knowing that you're going to hold the putt. Now, that one missed the tee, but it obviously still would have gone in. And again, I just do the tee just because it's busy. As you can see, there's people everywhere, so it allows me to get the same job done. And I don't mind doing it to the tee because it gives you a bit more, a bit more confidence, feedback, knowing that you've hit that small target. A lot of the time I like to go to the putting green first, do the, do my mirror work, um, and then I'll head to the range, hit balls um, on the range, and then I'll I'll get dialed in, dialed in with my short game, and then I try to endeavor to make my way back um, to the putting green. So and putting then, green, yeah, this, range, back to the putting green. Yeah, the second time I come to the putting green, it's more I'll take one ball, um, so I've done all my mirror work, setting myself up as consistent as possible I can for the day. Um, and then the second time I come back to the putting green, I'll just take one ball and kind of putt around each hole and kind of more competitive, um, pretend I'm almost on the course, putting out um, to each hole, hitting, hitting a few three footers with break and trying to two putt from, you know, 30, 40 feet and all that sort of stuff, just to get a bit more of feedback of what the green speeds are for the day and all that sort of stuff. And you've been using the back to basics putting mirror for a while. Yeah. 
As what would you say is the best thing that amateurs can learn and use the mirror for? Oh, they're fantastic to get. I'd see a lot of amateurs, and it's all dependent on your own body style, but a, a lot of amateurs either get their eyes way over the ball or way behind it. I, must, I myself personally like to have it a little bit behind it, being a, a shorter guy and my arms are long, so it kind of helps me, but you know, we kind of really want to get our eyes somewhat over the ball. Um, if you're not in that position from the get-go, you're kind of in trouble. Um, and also the back to basics is is the, the best mirror on the market without um, <laughs> selling it to you guys. But it's got um, all the holes in the in the side there, as you can see, and you can put kind of uh, put all the tees um, along the way there, and it really tracks tracks a perfect stroke. Um, so you know amateur golfers that take it out and cut across it, or if you take it in too far. And, and, and hit it out of the toe or, or what have you. This really gets you in a good position um, to strike the putt beautifully every time. And the more, uh, and golf is, you know, the more times we repeat something the correct, in the correct manner, the, the better we're gonna be. I mean, it's huge, it just comes back to that decision fatigue, you know, the memory and just creating that feeling over and over again, which is what you guys really want to have oh, absolutely. before you get out on the course. Oh, absolutely, because realistically, we don't hit a perfect shot or a perfect putt every single time, but the more times we can be in a, in a consistent um, uh, frame, being, you know, with our eyes over the ball in the, in the perfect manner for us, um, at the time, we're going to do a more, uh, more consistent stroke. Awesome. Well, I'm sure the amateurs at home got a lot from that. Look at all these professionals out here. Just enjoying this absolutely gorgeous day out at 13th Beach. Beach and Creek, you guys are playing the creek once and the beach twice? Yeah, we play, we play the, the- three times. Uh, we play the beach um, three times and yep. the creek once, yeah. So tomorrow I'm on the beach at uh, 7.51, I believe, in the morning. Don't quote me on that. I should yeah, know my tea time. But <laughs> 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 and, then, and then playing the creek uh, the second round. And then once, once we make the cut, uh, the weekend's on the, on the beach. Yeah, awesome. Well, we don't have to worry too much about that now. Let's yeah. head out to the range and That's see what it. that looks like. Beautiful. So basically, when I get to the range, I look for the flattest spot possible. As you can see, there's a few divots being hit. Um, a lot of a lot of pros working hard. I'll uh, get myself a bit of a flat spot and and try and brush away a bit of excess grass that I can. Balls down, and then I'll uh, get the align alignment stick and kind of find myself a a spot to hit to. So I'm going to go to that yellow flag out there and i so for the amateurs at home too do you recommend that same thing getting that alignment stick oh, picking absolutely. out that specific spot that you really want to be hitting to absolutely i, I just believe in uh, practicing or perfect practice i suppose so, so when you get out on the course and you're under all different conditions and variables then you're able to rely on what you've done before on the range um, so I, I like to align align myself correctly um, make sure that's all perfect first and then i'll grab a sandwich and just kind of warm up getting a feel for the pitch shots and, and how the, uh, the heaviness of the head's feeling on the day. I like to hit 10 or 15 um, sandwiches and then make my way up through the bag. Just getting a feel for the turf and moving my body. Um, before I come here, I do stretching in the locker, generally foam rolling and stretching, get my body moving before I head to the range. Yeah, it's so important. I've even found, you know, um, it's yeah. definitely something that I uh, focus a lot more on, right? Is oh, yeah. Making sure I'm getting my daily stretches, yep. getting, a, you know, and it's that dynamic stretches that are really, really important. Hundred percent, absolutely. You got to get that. You got to get your body moving in the correct manner. Um, we all have in, our own idiosyncrasies. When I was younger, I used to smash the gym a bit too hard, so I've got the um, rounded, <laughs> rounded shoulders. So I, I uh, struggle with a bit of external rotation in my, in my shoulder there. So I need to really warm that up. And, and now, something you're, you know, usually stretching out with bands and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just a few bands. I've got some specific exercises. Um, I actually worked as a personal trainer, qualified personal trainer for a long time, so I kind of know what I'm doing myself. Yeah. But I did instill a few guys to help work yeah. with that gave me programs and stuff as well. Just do more mobility stuff in the in the locker room yeah. and some fo foam rolling, getting the muscles activated. Um, and I've gone from the sandwich now to nine iron. Some days I like to go through the odd numbers of clubs in my bag, so nine, seven, five, and then other days the evens, just to get, so they're not all getting worn, not all getting worn out, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Personally, I don't, gener I don't hit it too good on the range when I'm out here because I'm, I'm not very good at focusing. So I'm a better, uh, 
better player on the course, whereas a lot of people are kind of the opposite. They're the range rats that hit it good on the course yeah. and hit it, hit it good on the range and then get to the course and struggle. But I, I just use the range as a basically a way to get an understanding of how my body's moving on on a day-to-day -day basis and what my shot shape is producing. Yeah. I've got a seven iron now, so I always try and give myself a nice lie on the range um, until kind of I'm warmed up enough. And then I'll actually put, I'll put a few in divots and things like put that. Put a few just, in some trouble. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind. I don't mind just putting a few in some bad lies, in some divots or, because on the course we get, we're bound to get ourselves into that position. So I put it in a little sandy divot with a, have to, have to try and get that feel for the day in case I'm in that position. And again, I'll only do it once or twice. Yeah, but good for people at home to do that as well too, because you know, you, especially around Australia, right? You end up in some of the areas off in the rough. You're traditionally in something probably like this. Oh, absolutely. And you gotta, you gotta learn how to get your way out of it. That was out of it. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> Came out nice. Like I said, I, I probably hit like five to 10 sand wedges and then I just go um, nine, seven, five. And I'll hit a few two irons, um, a couple of three woods, and then I'll, I'll get into hitting a few drivers. I'll probably, I generally hit four or five drivers, depending on the day. And then I go back to thinking about what the first hole entails and what kind of shot I need to hit off the first. Um, yeah. Here, for example, our first hole is a, is a into the wind hole and you kind of need to hit a two iron. So I generally leave with a two iron and I don't leave the range until I hit a really nice one. So then I have the confidence going on to the first tee that I'm, uh, I've produced that shot 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. huge tip at home for yeah. those folks, right? Thinking yeah. about that first pull you're getting out there, getting that good start. Yeah. I mean, so many of us have the first tee jitters or whatever you might say. Yeah, but absolutely. Replicating that confidence that you're gonna have it on the range, yep. whether it's even the second or third shot, will you get into that as well too? Yeah, yeah, generally, sometimes, I mean, if I have like a practice day the day before, I'll get, I'll get more in depth. I've learned, you know, a few skills Nick Faldo used to do back in the day where you kind of go through the course in your head. So I'll almost, Hit, hit one driver and imagine what I'm doing. Like the second hole is a par five, for example, and it's a really tight hole. So I'll make a, a, a narrow fairway in, off in the distance and I'll try and get my driver into that position. And then knowing the par five, I'll hit probably a four iron in for my second shot. So I try and replicate that shot. And I'll go through the bag just playing the course on, the, on my practice days at home. Um, if I've played the course before and have an understanding of what it's gonna do. I'd take that all day. And then, like I said, I'll finish, I'll finish with a two iron. Um, and I get more in the mode of, like I'm on the golf course, so I'll, I'll get rid of my stick. Whoop. And I'll, I'll get rid of my stick and I'll just pretend I'm on the first hole, feeling all the feels I'll have uh, tomorrow morning. And I'll get behind and visualize my shot and go through my pre-shot routine, how I would on the course in that moment. that just like that and I would is that a two or three that's a two iron yeah nice tightless t200 looks like a butter knife oh yeah to I, me I um, got the three I should get the two yeah the two's a great great club great club awesome folks well that's from the range with Ben Wharton yeah Giving you guys an inside look what an Australian tour player does before the Vic Open all right, Ben. Well, this is going to do it for the final episode, or not the final episode, just the final portion of our Coffee and Carts episode. You've been absolutely amazing. We went out and played some holes. Mm -hmm. You've given some professional tips. We've yep. given people an inside look what it's like on the putting green from the uh, range, all that sort of thing on mm -hmm. what you guys kind of do, what your cadence is. So I think people at home are really going to love this episode and yeah. we're all wishing you well this week. Thank you, man. Uh, the episode will be out by the, the time that this week is over mm -hmm. or after this week. Hopefully I have a trophy. Yeah, hopefully okay. we'll, we'll, we'll put a screenshot <laughs> up there with, with that. And uh, Ben, thanks, mate. Oh, mate, really you're, you're very welcome. Easy done. Cheers. Yep. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank thanks you. for having me. And for you guys at home, don't forget to follow Ben Wharton. All of his socials are going to be shown here in the video. And hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Your guys' support means so much to getting more players like Ben from the tours and PGA professionals across the globe on here. So thanks to you guys. And that's it for Coffee and Carts. Yeah.